we're gonna talk about a couple of things. I got some made made man made men's. I got some made men's, and I got a PlayStation Two Slim, the old Slimmy Slim. This is filthy. It's gonna be for a different video where we clean it up. But what I want to show you is particularly that right there. We'll put this off to the side for now, and we'll discuss these two little fellers. The reason that I have these two little fellers right here is that each one has different problems. And one of them is irreparable, the problem that is. And let me show you why. There's a video floating around out there that I have yet to produce that talks about this cover art. It's still something that a lot of us are still struggling with. And that is the used stickers being sun faded onto the cover art. Let me show you. So before we get into it, you can see that both of these, nice and crispy, no colors or anything, no, no darkening. You don't see any real darkening on either of this side. You don't see any darkening creeping up here, and you don't see any darkening on this top corner. That means to me that that's a good clean cover art. This one, little bit of water damage up top, okay? And that might be difficult to see, but let's see if my new thing works. If I can figure out how to turn it on. Kapow! So see that? How we've got some yellowing going on. There's a little bit of staining. That just tells us that we got some issues. Got a little bubble right there. Water damage right there. It's pretty obvious where it's all coming from. And then, of course, we have down below, if the camera would play nice with me. Down below, we have that black spotting. Okay. This is a mold-covered cover art. Right? That's fine. We know we knew that this was a mold-covered cover, covered cover art. Say that ten times fast. We knew that. And we knew that the case is also messed up. You can see some, some bubbling, some spotting on the case there. We know that. So we know that this is one that it's kind of a lost cause for a bunch of different reasons. We could stop and mitigate all of the mold on here and it would stay relatively fine. We could get rid of the mold on here and everything and it would be good. It would be stable, but that doesn't necessarily fix its other problem, which is on this side, which is... The yellow from their used sticker has transferred onto the art. Okay. So you see that discoloration. I need a pointing thing. So the discoloration on there is basically just telling us, hey, there's some, some staining. So see that line right there? You can still see it perfectly well. It shows up pretty prominently in real life, in real focus. Um, but this... There's a lot of different things that are happening. So, what happened to it was the sticker was put on here. The sticker was put on here at some time. Let me zoom in for you. The sticker was put on here at some time. Zoom. There we go. And in that time, the cover art also got water damaged. Okay? The way that we know this, and then we know that this was the order of things and the series of events is that you can see, if the camera will work with me, you can see the outline of the sticker itself where it has started to bleed through. So, and again, being careful because this is mold. So you can see that the sticker runs up to here. And we can see that because there's an outline. If we flip it over, sure enough, the sticker runs up to there. So what is essentially happening is Cover art got stickered at some point. Actually, I can tell you exactly when it got stickered. Cover art got stickered September 20th, 2007. See right there. And then at some point between 2007 and where we are today, some water got onto it. That water is potentially and most likely the reason why we have a color transference on there. As the sticker got soaked, it started to bleed and that bleeding went into the actual cover art. Reason I say more than likely, but we don't know for sure, is that 
I very rarely have color transfer issues on yellow stickers. Usually they come off just fine, but when I do, it's always a sign that there is some sort of moisture. You can see a number of different lines, a number of different damage, and there was something else that impacted it. Usually yellow stickers come off no problem, okay? So we know just from some clues that we're seeing here that this sticker is gonna be a pain to take off, one, because as the sticker gets wet and starts to dry, you can see that it started to shadow up and kind of mess up the art here. And we have a perfect example of what it should look like next to it. So if I ever get something where I'm like, man, I don't know if I can fix this or I don't know if this is how this should be or something, I'll go out and try to find a similar one to see how close it is to see, well, you know, is it, is there color fading? Is it accurate? That kind of thing. And it's just a good example. So this is, you know, how it's supposed to look and, and there's no damage or anything. And this one has the damage, but we understand why. Makes sense? So in the gambit of things that we're going to discuss today, we're not going to do cleaning of this or anything because you guys have seen those and I'll do more of those in bigger scale so that people can sit down and watch them. This one actually looks pretty clean. There is a pretty significant gouge right there. See that? But beyond that, it actually looks pretty good. If we go to the water damaged one, water damaged one also doesn't have a manual. If we go to the water damaged one, we can see some indication of either a resurfacing or of saturation. And this is kind of hard to tell. Um, I should drag out my other magnifier, but we're gonna use this one. It's also kind of hard to tell. Um, so see on there, trying to focus 10 cameras at once. See on there that. Hey, I have the same one. See the difference? So this one had something happen to it. I wouldn't necessarily say that this is moisture damage or water damage. It's entirely possible, but more than likely something happened with this one. It was resurfaced or something. It looks very clean. It looks really, really clean um, considering the age. And there's a lot of scratches on here more than anything. So as we're looking at it, you know, the first thing that we take notice of is there's separation within the center ring. Okay, so you see that separation within the center ring there, and and you can see the gap just barely. There's my paper towels. You can see the gap just barely on the inside. You see that? On the newer one, we don't have as much of a gap. Okay, so can that gap be caused by moisture? Yes, absolutely, 110%. But but that still doesn't explain to us the scratches and that still doesn't explain the excessive scratching all the way around here. That to me makes me think that went in on a spindle, got clamped down, went around a disc resurfacer. So again, it's if you have a disc and these are not, I think these were both like five or six dollars. If you have a game or a cover art or something that has some oddities to it and you can source another one, you know, compare and contrast, see how they age, see how they go about these. This game came out in, I want to say in 2007. <laughs> Can't even read. But this game came out long enough ago that you're going to see some degradation and it's probably going to have been resurfaced at least once. It doesn't say. There's no copyright. Well, there's a copyright, but there's no date. I'll post it up in the corner. But it's entirely possible that this game has been resurfaced a couple of times. We have a lot of used DVD stores and used CD stores that'll get a disc and they'll resurface it just automatically. It's, it's totally normal. It's totally within the realm of it. The only other thing that's a little neat to see is, and this might not show up on the camera. Oh, it does. Okay. So... This one's the clean one, and you'll notice that the clean one, the red of the banner, actually looks a little bit darker than this one does. So you're seeing a little bit darker red. You're seeing on the fund right there, you're seeing a little bit darker orange right there. 
The black is a little lighter on there on the PlayStation. The lettering is a little lighter. I want to say what we're seeing is a couple different things. I want to say what we're seeing is moisture affecting the printing, either moisture and or heat. And then some kind of pressure. We can still clean off this one because this one really isn't all that bad. You And again, you wouldn't notice it unless you had the two you know, side by side and you're just looking right at each other. A little bit of cleaning brings back some of the color. Not a lot. This is just an all-purpose cleaner. Um, any all-purpose cleaner will work. You don't want to use anything with alcohol or solvents. So let's compare them again after we did a quick clean. And you see that the color is, is closer than it was before. We got a little bit more of the darkness in there. But what we're also losing is the sharpness of the lettering. So you can see that Made Men is printed kind of blurry, and on here it's a lot sharper. So this disc had some things happen with it. I'm going to suspect that it was... See, and you see right there? I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Right where my finger is. Let me get something to point right there. See that tiny little bubbling? This was probably, yeah, this was probably saturated at some point. And so you had sat both saturation and you had disc resurfacing. If a disc, if I were to take this disc and I were to just dunk it in water, okay, what would happen? Water could potentially seep into the center ring, okay? And as it dries, it separates that center ring enough. There is a layer of adhesive that starts about here. A layer of adhesive can be permeated by water. It can be. It doesn't necessarily mean that it will be. You can dunk discs in water, pull them out and they're perfectly fine. You can dunk some discs in water and they'll come out and they'll be wrecked. And you can dump some discs in water and the minute that they get damp, the whole thing separates. It really just depends on the adhesive layer adhesion that you have. Adhesive layer adhesion? Yeah. Adhesive layer adhesion that you have on the center ring of the two layers of polycarbonate. For things like Wii U discs, you know that you have a finished edge. This isn't a finished edge. There's a loose edge here and there's two pieces that are sandwiched together. Tight enough, but still sandwiched together. Wii U, Blu-rays, stuff like that, they have a finished edge that has a little bit more of a barrier on there. But the thing that I think is always interesting is there is not a barrier on the center ring. It's not so much for relief. It's not, you know, a pressure relief or anything if you get liquid in here and then it's supposed to drain out on there. It's really just a byproduct of manufacturing. What does all of this mean? Well, this means that we have two games that are very similar that have led different lives and have ended up in different ways, but we know kind of the signs of, okay, well, this one had this damage to it. Let's work our way backwards and figure out how it got this damage, how we got to this point, and what all went into it. And by doing so, you're able to identify trends and you're able to identify, oh, you know, I saw this before. Well, the cover art, this is the cover art. Well, the cover art had water damage. Okay, well, what if it got water damage on it? Well, it's gonna look like this. And so it's not always a straightforward, I know exactly what is wrong with it. There could be a couple of different things. On this disc, it has been soaked. You know that it has been soaked because there is water or some kind of liquid that is permeated to the adhesive layer combining the two layers of polycarbonate. But we also have scratches, and we have scratches all around this ring. You can see them really well. So there's two things at play. It was resurfaced. It could quite possibly have been a resurfacer that had too much liquid in it and forced too much of the liquid from the pads as it was being resurfaced, forced it into the disc as it was rotating. Centripetal force is always gonna push the liquid into the disc. That's just how it works. We don't know. There's there's a lot of different things, but we know that it's definitely not just one and done or one or the other. The reason that I brought out, case doesn't even want to close, the reason that I brought out the old PlayStation 2 is that this old PlayStation 2 is a really good example of a system that would more than likely have played this game, you know, because it's a PlayStation 2 disc and it's a PlayStation 2 console. Terrible joke, we're gonna keep moving on from here. But one of the things that I have run across quite a bit lately from people is they say, well, I've cleaned my disc, 
a couple of times and I put it in the system. I'm not cleaning this console, stop it. And they'll say, I've put it in my system and it still doesn't work. And so I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you cleaning the disc because that one has that pretty significant scratch on it. I'm not gonna show you the disc working or not because that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is, is the next steps. I'm not, stop it, I'm not cleaning that. The point of this video is the next steps that you should do after you clean off a disc because there are some other things that can come into play that might be messing up how the outcome of your disc cleaning goes. Make sense? So, it's just gonna be really hard to resist cleaning that disc. So this got a big old scratch on it, big old gouge right there, but I'm not worried. I'll tell you why I'm not worried. One, the game already works, and I know that the game already works because I was really surprised that the game worked despite having that beefy scratch on it. And two, we're not trying to make the disc work. We're simply trying to show you what can happen. So you got a disc, you're able to identify where that scratch is, and you say, okay, let me go to town. You spread your polish out. We're gonna let it dry for a second. And we'll clean up the whole disc after this. We'll probably not on video, but we'll clean up the entire disc and I'll show you guys exactly the methods that we use. And I'm gonna keep making these disc cleaning videos of all kinds of discs because I, I want to make sure that you all understand that it doesn't take one to two times. I've used Novus 2 one time and the disc doesn't work. Okay, there, I had a disc the other day, I didn't even film it. I didn't even think of it. I did this the other day. I was probably on 33 or 34 times that I was cleaning it. And the factors that really come into play are how much pressure you use and how much liquid you use. I'm pushing down with pretty decent force. I'm going to do a whole video on how much force I use on all these different things. And it's going to be a little, you know, best practices sort of thing. But it really depends on the person that's doing it. If you do this five times, we'll say five times. I've actually said five times a number of times before. If you do this five times and you say, I'm getting no results, you can do one of two things. You can jump up to step three if you think that the scratch is significant enough. And remember in the GameCube cleaning series, my disc still doesn't work. I show you guys how to use step three. You can jump up to step three if you want to. All you're doing in step three is you're increasing the amount of aggregate that you're gonna use to beef it up a little bit. And so it's just gonna be polishing heavier and harder for you. The other thing you can do is just add more pressure, right? And the more pressure that you add means you're gonna be applying more force and then more force is gonna be removing more material, but it's a balance, okay? If you're scrubbing something, let's say you're scrubbing a dinner plate. And you're scrubbing, scrubbing, scrubbing on the dinner plate. You're trying to get food off. There's a point where you could scrub so hard that you'll punch right through the dinner plate. Now, realistically, that's probably not going to happen, but it could. You could start scrubbing straight through the dinner plate. It's a balancing act that you have to figure out for your scratches of how many rotations, how much light or heavy pressure, do I need to add more compound? So it really is a, well, I tried it one or two times and it didn't work, change variable. Yeah, change variable and, and start to use more polish. Sometimes people don't have any polish on the disc and they're sitting there just using a cloth and they're just rubbing the cloth into the disc. Well, that's, that's not gonna do it. That's not gonna help you out. You need to add something to it. You need to add a little bit more polish to it. Sometimes the pressure is not enough. I feel like people are using light pressure just in general. If anyone's having trouble and they're like, man, this method doesn't work. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I feel like people are using lighter pressure than they think that they need to. Um, the polish really does well with a pretty firm press. I mean, it's, and I've talked about it before in videos and stuff where it's, you know, you're pressing except on the credit card machine with a little bit of force. Now, if you're paying attention at home, and if you're following along, this is the third time that I've done this. 
And the reason that I've done it three times is I can still see the scratch. I want to be able to at least get rid of the scratch visibly or just enough so that it's reduced and it blends in with the other scratches. It's the reason why I'm only doing this one little side. I want to be able to polish this one little side. It's one little, one little side right here, one little flip right here. And then see how it looks in comparison to everyone else. Again, this game works fine. That scratch right there, probably it's probably some late game something or something I didn't run into. Or maybe it's not even impacting the game at all. One of the biggest complaints that I've gotten is people say, well, you polish a game until it works, but you don't polish it until it looks beautiful. Right, because this is going into my own collection. I'm not super worried about it looking immaculate. I want it to work. And then if it stops working at some point, I can sit back down here and I can film another video for you fine individuals. Mm, I can still see it. The other thing is, if you're not wearing gloves, you can sit there and you go whoop. And you can see if you can feel the scratch with your fingernail. And if you can, you know you got some work to do. This is number four, okay? If you are counting at home, this is number four that I've done this. And I can still see the scratch. But I just want to get rid of the majority of it. That's looking pretty good. So... I'm going to take my disc, and I'm going to open up my system. I'm going to zoom back out. There we go. And I'm going to pop it in the... Well, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I still have residue on here. Okay. I still have Novus Step 2 Plastic Polish Residue on this disc. Okay. As it dries, it creates this nice little powder, okay? As it dries on here, it creates a nice little powder. As it dries up there, it creates a nice little powder. That means is, just because I finished polishing a disc doesn't mean that it's ready to go into the system, and I'll tell you why. Dust particles. Dust and dirt particles from the disc, okay? I have polished the disc. The disc looks beautiful, but the disc still has some polish on it. So what you want to do is wipe off the disc, okay, before you put it in the system. And I'm not talking, oh, I did a quick wipe and called it a day. I'm talking you want to wipe off every single surface that you interacted with and you want to make sure that you get it completely clean because what will happen is you'll put it in the system you'll open up the system you'll put the game in there it'll start spinning and then these little tiny little itty bitty little pieces of dried up polish you see right there are going to start to come off so you see that That's going to come off the disc, and as that comes off the disc, that could potentially, and more than likely, flake up and get onto your laser. Okay? So, just because I clean the disc, and just because I use Novus, and I pop it in the system, and I go, man, it doesn't work. It would behoove you to check on a little old laser in there. Okay? So now how we do that, I see the little laser on there. This will be interesting because they're stupid lid. Is it going to work? Come here, Novus. Multi-useful. Okay. So see? A little laser right there. What we're going to do is we're going to take a Q-tip. Going to take a little isopropyl alcohol. And this is one, this is one that people have seen a bunch of times over and over again lots of different tutorials on it and everything this is what i like to do i roll so i roll it across in either direction and i roll it this way and roll it that way just to make sure that i get everything off you don't want to use the dry part of the q-tip because that dry part of the q-tip might leave some particular particulate 
There's the word. But you do want to roll it against it a couple of times, get it nice and clean. And then your air duster, real quick, one little real quick spurt. Just to make sure that you get everything all nice and clean. And nice and dry, okay? So, that's clean. So now I can take my Madman disc, Maidman disc, Maidman disc, pop it in there, and I know the disc is clean, the laser's clean. If the game doesn't work, then there's something else. Okay, so it's either the scratches are still existing and require a lot more work than I originally thought, or I gotta go back in and see, maybe there's some dirt floating around. It's probably the scratches. If you cleaned off your laser lens and if you cleaned off your disc of all the particulate and everything else on there, hey, you can see my kit. And you cleaned it off and it still doesn't work, give it another polish. Because more than likely, there's still some scratches on there that you have that are causing some trouble. It just might not be obvious. It might not be something that you can see right away. Go back in, clean it a couple times. How many times? Until it works. And each time that you do it, you wanna make sure that you're using pretty consistent pressure and pretty consistent amounts of polish. Try it a couple times, see if it works. See if you get any improvement, see if you get any changes of anything. You know, I did it three times and now it boots up, but then it freezes after the boot up screen. Okay, then you're on the right path. Keep cleaning it. You know, I've cleaned it five times and I have absolutely no change. Increase your pressure or increase the amount of polish you're using. Change some kind of variable, but you're probably gonna have to do it a handful of times. That's just how it works nowadays. You're removing material with every single pass. You're removing a little bit of material every single time. Do not worry, I promise. You're removing a little bit of material every single time, but you gotta make sure that you keep at it and you gotta make sure that you are removing the right amount of material. It, it's a learning process. It takes time. I probably make it look really easy because I've done it for 20 years now. Um, but always, 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 if, if you're cleaning a disc and you're like, man, this is not working, hit me up in the comments. I'm back to answering all the comments. YouTube had some weird thing where they stopped showing me comments. I'm back to answering all the comments. If you have a disc or something that doesn't work, hit me up. I'd be happy to answer those. But also remember, just because you clean the disc and just because the disc is looking perfect... Maybe somebody else needs a little bit of help. Maybe somebody down here needs a little bit of help. That laser lens, you might have put a little too much of the plastic polish onto that laser lens by just being dry. Also, laser lenses just need cleaned every once in a while. That's how that works. Until next time, me and my maid men are gonna, well, this guy's getting quarantined because this guy's covered in mold. This guy, we're gonna clean off the stickers. The sticker is on the case itself, nothing to worry about. A little bit of wrinkling on the back, but it's not actually water damage. It's literally just that this case has probably been warmed up at some point. No water damage though. And apparently I'll just keep buying copies of Made Men, Confessions of the Family Blood. And the mouth of a notorious mafia insider. He's got sword. Until next time, remember, keep cleaning. If it doesn't work at first, give it another couple of shots. You're not hurting anything if you clean it a bunch of times. Um, and just, just focus on what the improvements are that you can see. Be sure to always ask questions if you have any questions. I'm always happy to help. I'm going to keep making videos like this to run over all the little details that I probably forget in the big videos. Until next time, thanks for watching. I'm going to get back to cleaning. All right? See you guys.